Buckle up guys, this one's gonna be big, because today we are doing Turan. Alright, almost forgot. Hello everyone, my name is Torior, and welcome to my newest Hunts of Iron 4 video. Anyways, Turan. You have been asking me for quite a long time to do this, but what is Turan? Uh, Turan is a formable nation, you have to play as Turkey, and conquer lots of stuff around here, and form a new nation. So, why haven't I done this yet? Well, because you have to get through the very extensive focus tree of Turkey, which is a bit too big for my taste. But you kept asking and asking, so here you go, you're welcome. I hope it's good. But before we begin, a message from a sponsor. Alright, back to House of Iron, Turkey, Iron Historical, regular difficulty, let's go. Now, speaking of um, the Turkish focus tree, it is quite big. If you zoom out a bit, you see it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes, we have to get through all of this. That's quite a bit. So I had to do some testing for this campaign. I have a strategy planned out, at least half of one. Unless I make some stupid mistakes, this should go wonderfully, I hope, maybe. Let's start with the Monterey Convention and research some research and some industry and the superior firepower doctrine. Why? Well, because the Turan path is quite extensive. We have to fight pretty much everyone. We'll have to fight the Japanese faction, we'll have to fight the Comintern, we'll have to fight the Allies and most likely the Axis as well. Which means we'll have to use some very advanced tactics like support companies. Construction. Let's start with, say, four civilian factories and then some military ones, because we'll need guns. And produce guns only. Convoys and a submarine. If we get any more dockyards, I want them to go to the submarine, the rest just do convoys for now. We start with 31 units, which is quite a lot. Let's switch them to our infantry template and produce more of that. Essentially use up all the manpower we have. Garrisons on highest priority, reinforcements on the lowest. And that's about it. Speed the game up and on pause. We start with the wonderful leader Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, who gives us 30 stability and reduces advisor costs a lot. We're gonna make use of him and then replace him. We will have to, because in order to achieve all our goals we'll have to go fascist. As for our troops, let's exercise them. Nice thing about starting as Turkey is that you start with lots of wonderful generals. For example, he will make an excellent field marshal. We also have some negative modifiers, but we'll just ignore those for now. The Montreal Convention is about remilitarizing our straits, so we have to be firm on this. UK loans its support temporarily because they'll abandon us, of course. No settlements with the Soviet Union. Be aggressive, yeah. Now the Brits abandon us, of course they do. But we will stay strong. I have actually never seen an AI um, Soviet Union or historical focuses do anything uh, to fight at this point. So we can press them a bit. And they back down. We get political power and lots of stability. Which is great. Which means I also can afford to hire a silent workhorse for just 105 political power, thanks to Ataturk here. Now let's continue with the policy of editism which is not very good, because sadly we will be locked into civilian economy. But it also provides some other benefits, so it will be okay, just a bit annoying. More research, research. Alright, one more thing. We have Kurdistan here, which uh, is causing some trouble for us. Uh, let's switch our uh, occupation law to local police force, at least until we get better options. Concentrated industry. And with garrisons being the highest priority, um, this will all be fine. Deploy troops, exercise troops. With etatism, we got a free prime minister, who was pretty decent. Next up, the six arrows, which will provide us a way to endlessly and cheaply increase our stability and war support. Now, we could theoretically fight a civil war in Kurdistan and just defeat them and make it not be a problem anymore, but it's really not worth it. We'll just be fine doing this. With the six arrows done, we will continue with revive Turkish revolutionism. And also, now we have access to these nice decisions. Essentially, the only two relevant ones is republicanism, which it grants us 5 stability for just 25 political parts, so let's take that immediately. And nationalism, that gives us war support. We'll do that later. Now we'll only do this twice, for now, because right now we don't have any fascist support, so increasing non-line support is not a problem. But we need 30% fascist support, which is why once I do this, we'll have to pause that, because we need that fascist support. Construction and the computing machine. I know it's ahead of time and it's expensive. Now that we've revived Turkish revolutionism, we can hire the Vatan ideologue Mehmet. He is cool because he gives us stability and increases war goal justification speed. Also, next focus, cadre movement. And republicanism one more time. We are at 100% stability, but this will go down relatively soon. So it's good to stack some up. Can we deploy the troops yet? Yes, we can. 
at the moment with the army, have them exercise a bit. Also, I now have enough command power to promote this guy. He's going to be our field marshal. Let's make him an aggressive assaulter with offensive doctrine and also charismatic. With the cadre movement rehabilitated, we will start getting some fascist support. Now, Kemalism and the modern movement. This uh, tree is quite extensive and annoying to navigate, but once you know what you're, what you're doing, it is quite powerful too. Still, I prefer the ones that let you do stuff earlier. We can take republicanism again, but we won't, because this fascist support is quite precious to us. We need to accumulate 30. Ataturk falls ill, that's fine, we'll find a replacement in due time. Next up, integrate the fascist council. That will replace our prime minister with a dude that provides uh, fascist support, which is what we need. Concentrated industry 2. Now we have this guy, the fascist support, Kosomigas factories, and factory construction speed. He's pretty good, and he will be our ruler soon. Next up, red shirts. This will give us a lot of manpower and also increase our fascist support further. Yes, the red shirts. They always die first. Okay, now we have to wait until we have 30% fascist support to do this. In the meantime, we can go down here, but also down here. This will actually let us go to free trade for free and let us uh, get rid of the debt council and also give us an extra research slot. So since we have time, let's do it now. Manpower is coming in slowly. Let's not seek treatment for Ataturk. I could retire him right now and become fascist right away, which would let me justify war goals quickly and so on. However, if we did that, we would also lose this prime minister dude who's giving us fascist support. And it would be real difficult to accumulate enough fascist support to do Fatherland first. Well, maybe not difficult, but it would take some time. Then again, maybe it would be better to do it right away. It's an alternative strategy. Now, essentially, if you just click retire Ataturk now, uh, once this is done, and you get this guy in power immediately. Maybe that's the better choice, but let's take it a bit slower. Now we cooperate with the debt council. I'm not going to free trade because this will give us uh, free trade for free. And I'm not spending the political power right now because it doesn't really make a difference at this point. We need to get rid of the debt council because it is draining our political power. Let's start utilize foreign capital. Uh, we don't really need the investment possibilities. I'm not sure how profitable they are. We'll consider that later. But I do need the research slot. And also, let's get rid of the debt council. Absorb the Turkish public debt administration. That's step one. And step two, pay off all our debts. Also, now that we're on free trade, we need to buy some steel. Let's buy it from France. Should increase our relations a bit. Also, now that the debt council is no longer in power, we can hire Kamil Tolon. who will give us some political power and speed up our computing machines. We're already getting 1.4 per day. 24% fascist support. Just a bit more. Japan attacks China. We'll have to do that too at some point. It might be time to utilize these wonderful bonuses to get some more advisors. Let's get an infantry expert, and the army regrouping expert, and army maneuver genius. The army maneuver and speed increase is quite useful, but if you want to play a slow game and just, you know, more entrenched warfare, army defense expert is also a good choice. Right, so we've finished this branch. We're not gonna do anything else in it. Next up, intervene in the Spanish Civil War. We don't really care about the Civil War itself, but it will increase our war goal justification speed quite significantly. And once we're done with that I should be able to switch governments. Fourth research slot, here we go. We can't really switch out of civilian economy because of etatism. If we do that, it'll become problematic. Now we can do Fatherland first. Goodbye, Mustafa. Now, doing it this way, I've actually found in the testing, I'm not sure if it's supposed to work like this, but doing it this way will actually give us the national spirit, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, forever, which is half of his bonuses, essentially. I'm not sure if it's intended to work like this, but it does, which is great. Yeah, right. See, he's the national spirit. He is in retirement. Even if he, if he dies, we'll still keep it, which is great. And our new leader also increases our political power. From here on out, the focuses don't matter that much. But essentially, we want to go this way. Let's prepare to sort the scars of the Great War. Now, common destiny for all of Turkey. And we can soon start justifying war goals. But let's just wait for our government to reshuffle. Good, we lost the prime minister. And we can now hire Riza Nur who also increases justification time. Well, increases justification speed, not time. Now I can justify my first war goal, and that'll be Iraq. Oh, 60 days, and that'll only get better in time, I think. We have two full armies, let's staff them with generals and such. And we have two generals who can get the infantry expert thingy right off the bat. Kazim, infantry expert, and Abdurrahman. Infantry leader, infantry expert. Wonderful. And of course, our new and a great field marshal. You can exercise a bit more on your way. Kazim, congratulations, you are going to be conquering Iraq for me. And we do have some planes, not a lot, but let's send them here as well. Oh, also now that we've done the focus, 
that we needed fascist support for, we can return to doing republicanism. It increases our non-line support a bit, but doesn't really matter, and it does give us a lot of stability, very cheaply. Next, competing machine. Oh, and free manpower. Let's also make our troops aggressive. Let's continue down this path, and we can switch our occupation law in Kurdistan to reconciliation. Investing in our industry, in our research, and in our infantry. And that's it for now. Oh, also activate this guy. So now that Atatürk is no longer leading our country, we can get this guy. Another army regrouping expert. Justification is complete. Let's declare war. This should go relatively quickly. I could do some micromanagement, I suppose, once we break through the initial attack. Right, so you guys go here. And from here, we can essentially surround all our enemies. One of you goes this way, one of you goes this way, and so on. And with such orders, this should go quickly. Oh, I forgot this bit. Not a problem, we'll deal with it later. Right, next focus, I forgot. Uh, deal for the Oniki Islands. Also, we're going to be justifying a war goal on Iran, but before we do that, I want to improve relations with France and Britain a bit. They shouldn't guarantee anyone at this point who haven't generated enough royal attention, but just in case, we should do that. Also, I am already buying steel from France, so they should like me a bit. No, they don't really like me. Still, it's fine. It's fine. If I improve relations with them, they shouldn't guarantee Iran. And after Iran, I will be tricking them a little bit to deal with guarantees. Relations improvement is going on. Let's justify war goal on Iran. Won't take too long. Oh, and we have the port, which means it's time I moved this guy here and his troops, as well as my navy, which is not huge, but it's enough. Go over there to start preparing our naval invasions of Iran. But once we take Baghdad, this should be over. And if we have some port power to spare, why not do republicanism again? See, our stability is very, very low, but we have means of increasing it again and again and again. And we're getting a lot of political power. Well, we will be once we stop uh, the improvement of relations, just draining it a bit. It's probably a waste of time, the improvement of relations anyway, but uh, let's do it just for peace of mind. This is taking longer than expected. Justification is ready and we're not ready to attack yet. No guarantees? No guarantees. You know what? I'll just send this other army here as well. It might be because I sent too many troops here and they're having supply troubles. Or we should have waited with these guys. Right, um, on the Kalians. I don't know the all the other options here, but essentially if we give them right to chromium, all should be fine. Yay, wonderful. Stability and territory. Next up, let's solve the scars of the Great War. Come on. Take back that already. We don't have a lot of time. Just attack with everything. This is going badly. We don't have that much time. We can't let our war goal expire. Right now, once you're attacking from all sides, maybe it'll be a bit better. Now, we could reconfigure Turkish foreign policy. But that would actually get us in a bit of trouble with Romania. And I don't think I want to do that yet. So instead, we're gonna work on our armed forces a little bit. Next doctrine. Right, I'm officially out of time. Okay, we'll need to redo things a bit and have two wars simultaneously. You guys, go after Iran, hold control B to transport faster. And you guys, let's assign 10 of you to a different order, say here temporarily. Now cancel that order and now give you naval invasion orders that you will carry out soon. Essentially the entire coast of Iran, with exception of this. The remaining 14 troops will finish Baghdad off while we start fighting Iran, because we only have five days until the war goal expires. The invasion should have gone better. I sent too many troops there. Where is my navy? Patrol these two. Activate your orders. And you guys go to the port quickly. Are in position? Uh, kinda. It's gonna have to suffice. Oh well, let's declare war. It's not ideal, but it'll do. Mm, they might even get into my territory, but that should be temporary. I really messed up with Iraq, but uh, we will be fine. And the invasions are landing already. Good. And once these guys have finished, which just happened, I can move you over to the port quickly so that you can join the invasions once they land. Let's wait for all of them to land so that we can have clearer... Uh, orders and annex Iraq take all states and all have landed right so in order to make these orders look better I'll just cancel all the orders of this army assign everyone here attack north aggressively go so now we can actually start doing some manual attacks manual orders before the enemy can relocate their troops we might be able to capture some important victory points this is all empty but they will reinforce it quickly so let's just do some random attacks like this yeah that'll do before they have time to reinforce also send our planes here here's a gap let's use it See, there are already some defenses but not enough defenses and we're actually getting through modernize the army as you can see it's going pretty well tehran is defended not heavily defended though oh no it's actually not defended territories around it are but itself it's not cool so we might actually win soon. And we have cut them apart. Attack wherever you can. Take all the empty bits. 
let's do the aerial one as well we're not gonna use a really that opens up the way to some decisions that are gonna be useful overhaul training methods and modernize our tactics it's already July 38 and we have stuff to do I think it's time to start justifying some new war goals. However, the allies are gonna be messing with us, which is a big issue. So I'm going to drain their political power by making them guarantee countries that I'm not actually going to attack. Let's justify it on Belgium. See, they both guaranteed it. All right then, about the Netherlands. The British guaranteed it. The French still have not. Let's give them some time. Just make sure to not finish the war goal. Our war goals are very cheap. Right, cancel it for now. The French probably have political power to do more, but not sure if they will. Let's do Norway and see if the Brits guarantee that immediately they don't okay they don't have the political power so what we're gonna do now is we start justifying on our actual target which is Afghanistan and then now we also justify on a decoy target which is in this case Denmark the Allies should want to guarantee Denmark before Afghanistan I think and we're gonna observe the two should be okay if they have a political power to guarantee they should guarantee Denmark first might be wrong. Ah, Denmark got guaranteed by the Brits. Good. That means Afghanistan shouldn't get guaranteed by the Brits, so that is. Let's go down to here, then we can get rid of the army penalties we have. Iran, take all states. Now, Afghanistan is actually a very difficult terrain. We need to rush them quite hard. I could do a trap, but hopefully if I just attack very quickly and, you know, just send my troops manually to Kabul, we should be able to crush them. Also, I suppose I'll build an airbase here. Just one. I don't have a big air force, but even the small one that I do have should help a little bit. And I do need to crush them immediately because this can become very lengthy if they are allowed to entrench themselves in the mountains. So we have to crush them on the relatively flat terrain here and then just lean into the blow with all our might. Oh, and once we finish the focus, we can do this, plus 10% division speed. Hungary renounces the Treaty of Trelon, which makes them fair game to attack if we have access, which we don't. Justification on Afghanistan is complete, declare war immediately, and do just a manual run for Kabul, the thingy with the dockyard, and instruct proper use of modern infrastructure. Yeah, they did that one. Also republicanism, and cancel the justification we have on Denmark. The airfield is complete, let's not forget about that. The planes won't do much, but every bit helps. Make sure everyone is super aggressive. You might even do the super force attack thingy. I'm not sure it will do anything. Let's send a few units around here. This is empty. Go there. Right, one of you. Keep these guys in place and be quick about it. They are slightly entrenched in Kabul, but if I surround them, that will not be an issue. Oh, I am winning. Kinda. Now I'll continue doing focuses here. Oh, and I can probably remove my penalties. Where's that? Oh, I need navy experience for that. Come on. Wonderful. Right, now everyone just attack their capital. And you do some naval exercises. Finally. Right, Afghanistan. Annex everything. Next stop, I guess, Greece. Let's prepare for some naval invasions. And you guys, well, it's time for you to go home. I reorganize the armies a bit. You guys are going to handle the Greek islands here. And you will wait to participate in the naval invasion. Okay, good. Get in position. Now, how to get a war goal bypass Treaty of Sadabat? Oh, right, because I annexed them. Um, how to get the war goal without angering the Allies? Well, the same way we did that before. They're guaranteed by Romania, but so are we. This is why I am not reconfiguring our foreign policy just yet, because I want to conquer them while being guaranteed by Romania. Justify war goal on Luxembourg. Should guarantee it. France guaranteed it. Will the Brits guarantee it too? Maybe give them a few days? No? I'll restart the officer call. I forgot about that one. I'm not sure if I need it, but it might come in handy. Okay, Luxembourg did not get any new guarantees. Uh, let's do Denmark again quickly, because France might have some political power to guarantee them. No, okay. So we'll do Greece and Switzerland as a decoy. Now if the Allies want to guarantee someone, it should be Switzerland, I think. Hmm, Greece would actually give me military access. Well, I'll have access all right, just not the, the type, you think. Activate all the orders. I did get the naval experience, so let's do the things. Streamline communication between ships. And that removed the entire thingy, didn't it? No, I still have it. Did I do it in the wrong order? Freaking do it in the wrong order. There was this, this other thing, not the ships, but the other thing, and it disappeared. It should have removed my disorganized armed forces thing, and it didn't. God damn it. Well, it just reduces my war support. It's not that big a deal. But um, I think if I clicked the other thing, not the ships, but the, the other thing with air first, then clicking the ships would actually just remove the penalty altogether. Well, damn it. Let's start producing better guns. Let's check the guarantees. Switzerland did get guaranteed by Czechoslovakia, from all people. Strange. I could handle Czechoslovakia if they were not joining the Allies. But they did choose Switzerland, which is good. Are you guys in position yet? <sighs> did I not tell you to use strategic 
freaking redeployment. I did. I always do. You always ignore me, you idiots. Munich agreement. So at this point, Czechoslovakia is not a problem anymore. Even if there is a fight, they shouldn't be able to join the Allies. Right, justification on Greece is ready. Declare war immediately. And cancel the one in Switzerland. Oh, see, Britain and Czechoslovakia got hooked on that. Deco is for the win. It's difficult to choose, though, because it has to be a country they care about more. Who's next? Maybe Portugal. Maybe I should do Portugal or Ireland. I'll think about it. So who should we do after Greece? Yugoslavia or Bulgaria? Probably Yugoslavia. So let's justify Yugoslavia. And as a decoy, I will use Portugal. I think that will work. Let's see. I hope it will. Also, I need to kill Greece quickly for this to work. I can't do my naval invasions because... Is there a naval battle? There seems to be one, yes. But I should win it, yes. And here we go. We have landed in Athens. Wonderful. And on Crete. Cancel all your orders. Just do this manually. This should work out nicely. Once you're done with this, sail over to Athens. Keep moving. Activate all the orders. And Greece should fall soon. Let's check on Yugoslavia. No new guarantees. Let's check on Portugal. No new guarantees. I don't want to fight Portugal. I'm just using them as a decoy because I think... I'm not sure I'm understanding the AI on this one well enough, but I think if Yugoslavia is guaranteed by Romania, they should prioritize guaranteeing other targets, like Portugal. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, let's hope to get lucky. I don't actually need Yugoslavia, but it will strengthen me industrially quite a lot. So it would be nice to have it. Overwhelming the Greeks. It shouldn't take much for them to surrender. Actually, I think they'll surrender once I take this one. Yep, take all states, please. And get ready to fight Yugoslavia. We'll use the same tactic. One army on the border, another on naval invasions. It would be easier if we took Bulgaria first, but I want to do Yugoslavia so that I can move on with my focuses. No new guarantees. And how much longer? 21 days. Let's land all around here. There's one thing we should do, maybe. We might want to join the Axis, then they would split their forces to go here. But if we don't, all the troops should be here, thus our naval invasions should have the free reign of the area. Let's even send some over this way. They will not have supply, but it shouldn't really matter. Okay, naval invasions are set up. Our fleet. Have you got any new ships? No. Navy. Here you go. Patrol. The Adriatic. No guarantees on Yugoslavia yet. Looks like we can finally reconfigure our foreign policy. It takes 70 days and at the end of it we will lose the Romanian guarantee. And the Romanian guarantee is keeping the Romanians from fighting me once I'm fighting Yugoslavia. So it is quite helpful, but not doing the focus also blocks us from further Illnesses that we would get down the line. I'm really bummed about the the armed forces and this organization thingy. If I clicked the other decision first, I think I would be rid of the penalty altogether. Do we need extensive conscription yet? Not yet, no. Military theorist. The Mondays, no guarantees, come on. After that, I still want to do Bulgaria and Hungary if we manage that. Okay, all goes ready. Let's cancel the justification in Portugal. No need for that anymore. And declare war on Yugoslavia. Go. Did the invasions launch? Come on, did you launch? Yes, you did. Wonderful. So we're gonna win, I'm pretty sure. And we've landed. But right, we're gonna need quite a lot of micromanagement here, which I dislike. Attack aggressively. Banja Luka. In Polish, Banja Luki actually stands for something untrue and thought up, like if you are telling tall tales or something like that. Manual attacks going on. They shouldn't have too much of a defense here, if they have any. And we are pinning their forces here, at least some of them. So we basically have free reign, don't we? There is some resistance, but not that much. And I'm being invited to the Axis. It is in my best interest to join the Axis, but not necessarily at this moment. I still want to get Bulgaria. Should I justify on them now? I need to bait the Allies into guaranteeing someone else still. Let's do Ireland. How you guys doing? Alright, we do hold their capital, which is nice. There's another victory point here. Ljubljana is a big one, isn't it? Can't click it because there's a battle. They should surrender soon. Now we can ramp up the aggressiveness. Let's check on Ireland. Did they get any guarantees? They got one from Czechoslovakia. Let's try the trick with Portugal again. Do Bulgaria and Portugal as a decoy. Might work, might not. We'll see. I'm using out of Podka power on this, but it's not wasted. Republicanism sucks a bit steadily. Good. I think we're almost done with Yugoslavia. Any day now. There you go. That's a lot of guns I'm gonna use. Take all states, please. I'm just doing a one tag thingy. Okay, Bulgaria. Let's check on Bulgaria. No guarantees? No guarantees. Now, before we attack Bulgaria, we should join the Axis, because if we don't, they might. Again, don't you have a non-aggression thingy? Yes, you do. Hmm. So we can join the Axis while attacking Bulgaria. Let's just hope Adolf likes me more. I could do a naval invasion here on Varna, but I think it will be so overwhelming that it won't be necessary. Once again, please use quick redeployment. So far, so good. And they like me. They would even give me military access. Let's hope Adolf likes me more. And cancel Portugal for now. Go, attack. Yeah, don't need a naval invasion. It could be useful if we were attacking them first before Greece. Um, then Belgium joined Dallas. Okay, that's fine. Then we could do a naval invasion here and surround them. But if we have such large borders and overwhelmingly more troops, 
it is not necessary. We've reconfigured the Turkish foreign policy, finally. I've delayed it so much to conquer these territories. Not sure that's the best course of action, but I do think so. And now, let's go with Germany. Bulgaria, take all states, please. Next up, I mean, we could fight Romania, but Romania is guaranteed by France. We could attack France now with the Axis. It would be problematic. But there's still Hungary for the taking. So what I'm going to do now is justify war goal on Hungary. Very quick, 25 days. And also join the Axis. Because if I'm attacking Hungary, it's likely that Hungary will join the Axis if I don't do the thing. As you can see, we have stretched ourselves quite a bit. We don't have a lot of uh, factories because our compliance is low, but I'm working on it. Kurdistan has reconciliation, which means a lot of resistance, but also a lot of compliance. And I think we'll be fine with this, but we do need to check up on them from time to time. Now you're redeploying properly, at least. Oh, I finally have enough guns, which means we should get more armies. But we'll do that once we're done with Hungary. Let's get an infantry equipment designer. Improved computing machine, now advanced computing machine. Yes, I know, very much ahead of time, but all my other research is speeding up. Time for excavation. One, two, three. Justification on Hungary is complete. Let's declare war immediately. Don't need to call anyone. Another excavation. Shock and awe. Italy joins the Axis. Fate of Czechoslovakia. And we can continue to the Claudius Agreement. It's actually pretty cool because we get free infrastructure and military factories if we have enough chromium. And with excavation, I just need to build some infrastructure in a few places to get lots of military factories. Let's not build just yet, because once I do excavation 1, 2 and 3, the amounts that can be extracted will increase, and, well, we don't want to build infrastructure needlessly. Hungary, there we go. See, every state that produces 65 or more chromium will receive 3 levels of infrastructure and 2 military factories. That's a lot. Okay, I think this will be our borders for a little while. Time to turn eastward. Over here to Xinjiang, to be precise. We might need to increase infrastructure on the way, though. Bring everything to at least level 3 for now. Maybe level 4, so that we can deliver supplies. It will take some construction, quite a lot, actually. Yeah, I think it's time we went after China. For now, one army should be sufficient. Also time for extensive conscription. Liberia joins the Allies. We have no business with the Allies right now. We have circumvented the Allies. We've acquired lots of territory. Compliance could be better, but I'm working on it. It's going to be time to start equipping our troops with support equipment and stuff. Should we get an air force here? Let's justify on Xinjiang. I could do China directly, but there's no need. And if they don't join immediately, I'll be in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Um, we might even want to join the Japanese faction, but we'll see about that. Also, it might be a good moment to create a spy agency. Xinjiang will entrench themselves here a bit, but if I'm quick enough and they don't get reinforcements, I should be able to push through. Now, they're in a war and in an alliance, so no guarantees should happen here of any kind. Mind. Also, they're communists, so we don't who could guarantee them would be the Soviet Union. Call this agreement complete. See, here, 85 chromium means we actually got two military factories and two infrastructure or three infrastructure levels for free. We will want to increase our infrastructure, for example, in Antalya. This way, we will have enough chromium to also get that bonus. Macedonia is also a candidate for that. Maybe Afyon and Bursa will get it on its own once we research excavation. So, the Claudius Agreement is actually going to provide us with quite a lot of nice boons. Now, let's continue this path. Approve the funk plan. This will actually bring a funk to our country. And boy, do we need funk. Motor of Ribbentrop packed. And the Arkham justification complete. Time to face China. Well, let's go. Attack immediately. Yunnan joins, Zhenxi Click joins. And we get an agency. Localized training centers. Alright, they seem to have entrenched themselves. We might have a hard time getting through here. Miss China has joined them. We might want to leave the Axis now and join Japan. Yeah, I probably should. Let's do that. Oh no, I can't because, because, because some of these actually require me to be in the Axis. But I can get military access from Japan. So, so take it from Manchuka and Manguko. I can actually fight in their territory without being in their faction. Maybe if I made a trap for them. Yeah, we should try that. I want to give them access to a large territory, which they should use, get in there, and then I should be able to surround them. And China has joined the fight. Kazakh Turkish Soviet. That's gonna be useful. Go to Xinjiang. Republicanism and war propaganda. War propaganda is actually good, but there's a bug um, that can, you know, mess it up. So yeah, I'm hoping they will get into my territory and let me surround them and crush them. If not, I can always attack from the Japanese side. And excavation three. Time to do atomic research. For the bonuses, of course. You move in. Yes, you're moving. Come on, stretch your forces thin. Actually, that other army, these guys, will all go here. Poland joins the Allies, that does not concern me. German officers, ah, they're bringing more and more. Alright, I'll just let them spread a bit. Of Nanjing, good. Well, I can actually start thwarting the centers here and so on, but it really doesn't seem necessary right now. 
If I can close the trap on them, they'll be dead very quickly. Let's try and extend this trap a little. The clo closing the trap essentially. God damn it, please. If I tell you to do strategic redeployment, do strategic redeployment. That's the third time I'm telling them to do that. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, we need to strike here very hard. And if we're able to crush them in this area, we'll cut the rest from supply and we should be able to get into Sinkang. Oh, no ciphers. Let's do Sinkang. Germany tax people, we don't care. Oh, Poland has capitulated. Did I miss that? France still standing. I've cut them off. So these guys are as good as dead, but we still need to break through. Full of Paris. France capitulates. Let's have a look. We're gonna get Vichy France? Yes. And the Axis have military access through me, so they could actually go to Vichy France, which now owns this territory, and deal with Africa from there. We'll see how that works out for them. Excavation 3. Let's now have a look at the Claudius Agreement situation. It was supposed to be 65 chromium, right? It's 62 here. One level of infrastructure will bring it to 66, thus qualifying it for the agreement. How about here? We would need 20. So a couple of levels of infrastructure. We'll do that here. And Macedonia, that is insufficient. So let's not waste. The trap worked, but I don't know if it worked well enough for us to actually get across here. Doesn't look like it, unfortunately. It is 1940. Let's invest in some inventory buffs. So Union and Finland sign a white piece. And we've dealt with the trap. What is my participation in this war, by the way? 6%. Not a lot, but already enough to take some China. But I don't want to wait for Japan to win, especially since they just might not. We need to actually contribute. Billy sends 75 light tanks. Don't really care. I could use tanks, I just can't be bothered to do that. Naval Academy thing. Ah, oh, damn it, they're reinforced. You know what, you guys should probably just go to Japan and start attacking. I do have military access. Bring me war participation. Let's do republicanism, nationalism. You know what, since I have that political power, maybe I'll try the investment possibilities. See what that brings us. Start with Germany, because they like me. It might be time to start working on support for my troops. Let's produce some support equipment, artillery, toward anti-air, all these things. Edit the template to be a 20th one, and then duplicate it, because we might need a 20th pure infantry for something. Then you plus support, and support artillery, recon, uh, anti-air will be added later. I should have enough equipment to switch all my troops to that. Let's do it. Join the Axis Bypass. Increase German military aid. Some more civilian factories. So what's with the investment thing? I didn't get any response. Should I do that again and just see if I get factories or something? All right, the investment thing is about to finish. Let's see if we get some sort of bonus. 78 factories right now. Germany rules out investment and also I lose political power. Well, that was stupid. Should we do Italy as well and lose more political power? No, we probably shouldn't. Now, we do have those fundamental states and we could try and deal with that. But I don't really know if I need to. They don't seem to be doing any harm to me. I do have sectarian laws, but just just some stability and law support. And now we get an extra research slot. How are you guys doing? Well, you seem to be helping. What's my participation? 8%. That's actually decent. Atomic research about to be complete. Even more research boosts. Now we choose a path. I prefer this one. Let's pack for a long winter. See, the problem with the focus tree like this is these are focused on conquering places like Iraq. I'm way past that. I had to go through different stuff just to reach this point in the focus tree, and now I no longer need the focus tree for it. Which is why I prefer the focus trees to be short and sweet, like, say, Romania or Hungary. This entire DLC, uh, what was that, Death or Dishonor, had very good focus trees. Short and focused. All right, we're making progress. Did I just get defeated here? Oh, it was the Soviet tanks, that's why. No matter, I should still uh, gain some participation once I kill these guys. Turkish panzers. Not like we're gonna do panzers, but I need to focus. Make sure you just push deep into China. And sure, you can become a fortress buster and an improvisation expert. That's my best general. What is my participation? 18%. That's actually decent. I'll be able to get a lot of manpower for this. Maybe even naval access. More republicanism. I'm not sure if I need to do any of these, but I do have some political power to spare. Get rid of the enemy within. So that's fundamentalists and that's traditionalists. Do I really count as Kemalist anymore? Yeah, right. Let's thwart attempts and entrench Kemalism. And let's hold a march in the fundamentalist state. My guys are having a difficult time getting supplies. But they're also beating up China. I intentionally left Romania fine because they are helpful in fighting the Soviet Union. And we will need to fight the Soviet Union. God damn it, Germany and Italy. What are you doing here? I'm not fighting the Allies for you. Right, we'll want signal companies at some point. Also engineers. Let's do engineers first. Propagate the doctrine of pan-Turkism. This is actually gonna be quite useful for us. Especially the compliance gain from the advisor. My troops are very good, apparently. Shock and all last doctrine. I'm fine prolonging this war a bit. If that gives me more war score. More war score means more stuff in the peace deal. Germany attacks the Soviet Union. 
we will join in once we've dealt with China and possibly Japan. I'll think about that because I do need Manchuko for Turan, I think. To grade German officers into the army. Once we're done with this, I can leave the Axis. Oh, damn it. Japan attack the Philippines. Which means they won't be able to really do a good job in China, which means I should probably end this war myself. Yeah, those troops are really good. Pity I couldn't get through Sinkiang here. Oh, maybe I can. Looks like there's nobody here. Be quick. Nope, of course there's someone here. Someone weak? There is a chance. A very small chance. We said some support. Oh, we got through. Ha, <laughs> wonderful. Don't abandon the post. Well then, in that case you can go aggressive. As long as you don't abandon the area. This was surprisingly successful, finally. Japan declared war on the Dutch East Indies, which is not a good idea. You should just focus on China. Don't start two wars. Restoring our nation's pride. Stability and political power. Hold more marches or something. Sure, let's entrench Kamalism and hold the march. I don't really know how these mechanics work. I don't need to. Oh, Romania's not doing too good. Let's produce better artillery. United States just joined the Allies. Participation 28. If I don't join Japan, they'll actually have a more difficult time taking territory in Xinjiang. I mean, that's something we should do. China is almost capitulated now. You know what? I think I'll just not join them and see how this works out. Shouldn't Xinjiang be surrendering by now? And they did. 30%. And China is almost capitulated, but that's not capitulated. And the Japanese are stretched thin at this point. So who knows? Maybe I'll get communist China for myself, which would be wonderful. Now this pulls me out of the axis, doesn't it? Oh, no, this one does. It's fine. Okay, Misak Emili. Damn it, I almost forgot. I was supposed, actually I forgot, not almost forgot, just forgot. I was supposed to hire the guy. Where is he? Pan Turkik Doyen. This one. But I didn't do that earlier because he actually gives me manpower from non core territories and also increases my compliance gain everywhere, which is wonderful. I also increased my infrastructure along here to level 5 at least because I am going to be attacking the Soviet Union from here. After we're done with China, I'll be revamping my armies and actually training my armies because we don't have a lot of them. Oh, best guns time. She recently capitulates to me. Good. Focus on the communists. I want communist China to capitulate to me. If we're not in the same faction, it would be much easier for me to take this territory and thus secure most of China. Mexico joins the Allies, that's fine. Allies might become my tool. We'll see. It's looking promising. I could capitulate China right now. I just uh, prefer to get more territory first. Communist China's capital is mine. More republicanism. Who knows, maybe I'll get shang as well. Since I am not in the same faction as Japan, it should be very expensive for them to take this territory, and not expensive for me. So even being stretched over my border, needlessly, Germany managed to push the Soviets back. Well done. Maybe that's because the Soviets are stretched along my border as well. We demand the return of 1920 borders and more. Right, uh, one of these gives me cause on all the Kurdish states. I think this one. Yeah, let's be nice to the Kurds. Researching better companies for support. shang capitulates. I think it's time to end this. Attack everywhere, everyone. Japan demands French Indochina. Not my problem. Actually, I should send a spy to Japan. Or maybe several. Looking good. Maybe I won't even need to fight Japan. No, I actually need to because I want Manchuko. It's time for China to end. Right, so let's do that one. We'll automatically get cores on Kurdistan. We'll need to spend political power on that. And China has capitulated. Okay, Japan puppeted. Who did you puppet? Yunnan and Xinjiang. How did you puppet Xinjiang? I controlled this territory. No matter. No matter. It's fine. I will in turn puppet communist China as well as China China. We're the cheapest province, of course. Which one's the cheapest you have? Well, this one here. Untake everything else. Now, what we would like is a land connection to our new possessions, which means these territories. Okay, this will suffice, as well as a sea access, like this, for example. No, well, not this round, at least. No, this will do. It is sea access, and turn. The stuff occupied by Japan is expensive to me, but this is occupied by me. This is not occupied by anyone, I think. Let's see. Communist China, will you get it cheaper? Yes, you will. All right, I will give it to you then. At least the territory here and here. Essentially, all that I occupy currently is cheaper for me. Let's start with Chengxi Click. We want to get as much as we can because this is good industry and also sea access. Okay, that's it for this turn. They took Shanghai. Damn it, they took my last bit of my. It's gonna look ugly. Japan has no interest in this territory, so I can just pass. Now, we want communist China as a puppet so that we can derive manpower from them. So, here you go, have some China. Just give it to them directly here. And done. We have created a puppet. Chinese Empire. And they have 14 million manpower. Could be more, it will suffice, but we could have done more. But I can still return all this territory to them. It is their core territory. And they'll get manpower from it. Also, what kind of puppet are you? Reichskommissariat. 
which means 65% of military factories and 25% of civilian. Cool, let's give it to them. I'll actually get more if I give it to them because we don't have compliance there. We just need to give it to the right China. Because reorganized nationalist China is this little bit, but they don't have the good bonuses. So, Chinese Empire returned territory. You're welcome. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, I guess it could be better, visually. Now, Japan, will you attack me? No, but I can attack you. I could attack them by just on Siam, who is in their faction. Actually, I have military access, so I could do all the 66, but I can also do a normal naval invasion. Or I can combine both. We don't want to just, you know, capitulate immediately, because then the Allies get all the war score. But I can do a combination, since I do have military access. See how our factory situation turns out. 181. I'm not sure if I need to wait for the end of the month or not. But it is a decent amount, finally. Resources. Cancel all trades. Of everything. Because our friend, communist China, is all the resources. Okay, not all the resources. It could be better. But I can just build infrastructure for them to increase that amount. It will go to me anyway. And they will have their... Independence reduced by me doing this. Get more steel. Now it's time to prepare to take on Japan, because I want Manchuko and this bit of Sinkang and this bit of Ma, because it doesn't look too good. I will have to leave the Axis, because they have an aggression pack, but that won't be a problem. They'll just welcome me back. I will prepare some troops using Chinese manpower, because we have, oh, just 15 million? 13 million is plenty. And you'll get even more once I reconquer this territory for you. Regardless, I don't want to do Order 66 against them, I just want to drop some troops in their territory, so that I don't have to do a naval invasion. Um, which is technically Order 66, but not the default kind that just capitulates your enemy instantly, because I want to have some war party participation in this so that I can take all their territory. If I just capitulate them instantly, the allies will get everything. Let's use the Chinese Empire's template. We will want three templates. One with support, one without support, and one of just very tiny units. Tiny China. 20 with pure infantry from China. It's gonna be good for garrisons and such. A 20 with, with support from China. I think signal companies, anti-air, recon, engineers and artillery. I don't know, let's give it a knife. Right, and then we duplicate it and make a 40 width, which we're not going to use immediately, I think, but I'll do it for the future. All right, uh, the symbol. The axe is bigger than the knife. Let's use the axe for this one. So for our main fighting force, we only use these guys, uh, these for everything else, and these to quickly train troops. I'm gonna need some more field marshals and generals and such. I have a German guy, Fall of Rome. Well, that's not very good for me, is it? Because I need to defeat the Soviet Union. Ah, we can handle it. Deploy all these troops and organize them into armies. Let's try to take over the south in the initial attack and then push north while acquiring some more war score. I should probably also do garrisons. Japan will probably not launch naval invasions, but just to be safe, we need to prepare for that. And you go home, but stay small. If naval invasions or something start happening in the area, you can change your template to a bigger one. New operative. I would like a Soviet one, but apparently we don't have that available. Let's do some more republicanism. Reopen the hump. What is that? A puppet will get free military factory. Sure. Suez Canal is blown? It's unfortunate. I'm not sure if an Asian section offers a Soviet spy, so let's do a European one just in case. I think an Asian one does, but just to be sure. Philippines capitulated. Liberated the Kurdish diaspora. Let's have a closer look. I can now do Turinist Ambition to give me some war support. I don't need to do that now. All it does is just show me uh, what states I need for Turan. We would get some war goals from this, but we can just justify those very quickly. I guess I'll do it. Time to start justifying, I guess. We don't want Siam to be taken over by the Allies. They have a non-aggression pact with our faction leader. Well then, Germany, goodbye. You're not gonna dictate my foreign policy. 45 days. I will not really be ready in 45 days, but uh, I think we can handle that. Actually, me leaving Axis might be a good thing for the Germans, because they will recall the troops from my territory and manage to fight the Soviets better. On the other hand, the Soviets will also recall troops from my borders. Make everyone aggressive. How many guns are we missing? Oh, just 100,000. That's not that much. So we take Tan and Tuva, and there's stuff happening here, but we will recall this army to deal with it as soon as it's done, and it will be done very quickly. Uh, seems to be no Japanese here. Just to make sure I have more war participation, let's move these guys over here. And make sure everyone only garrisons ports, because we want to get a lot from occupation. Essentially, you're making a very light version of Order 66, the one that only puts us in enemy territory to avoid a naval invasion and not just capitulate them. This way, we'll have more war participation. Activate all the orders. There is a chance Japan will not want to join this fight if we attack Siam. In that case, we will need to do a naval invasion. And for that purpose, let me get all that navy over to China. Here will do. 18% fighting strength, which means they actually have some guns. That's war goal, and it's ready. Okay, I'm gonna declare war on Siam. I'm not going to call in my friends. 
because I want Japan to actually accept the code ones. Okay, they've joined. Now I can call Chinese Empire. I suppose I could also call Reorganized Nationalist China. I guess I'll do it. My puppets are now involved. Did I manage to capture the ports in Japan? Yes, I did. Good, we can start moving and capturing territory. Cancel your orders. Actually, don't cancel your orders. Or rather, just make new garrison orders. Because with the garrison orders, we can very quickly expand if there's no opposition. Leave Tokyo for now. We don't want to capitulate them too quickly. Right, go do your thing. Actually, a garrison attack, if there's no enemy troops, can be much faster than a frontline attack. But... Well, not very effective if there is opposition. Also, we could just do it manually, but I can't be bothered to. In the meantime, how are we doing on the mainland? We're not attacking. Oh, they're not involved. Oh, well, they are a puppet, so I can just declare war right away. About Sinkang? Same here. Menguko? Chuko. And Yunnan? Yunnan is in the war. Managed to take the ports. Already 7%, see? Actually, I'm gonna leave one of these guys as the garrisoner of everything here, just uh, focusing on the ports, so that we're not pushed out of Japan. And the other two will do a front line around Tokyo, which I will leave to the Japanese for now. Oh right, I'm now at the war with the same guys as the Allies, we can use that to get military access. What's my participation now? 15%. I'm being invited into the Allies. Actually kind of funny. I could use them to kill the Germans, but I'm more interested in fighting the Soviet Union and the Germans will help me with that. Use the Allies to fight the Soviet Union? Now then does that uh, liberating stuff, maybe later. We have secured the South. Let's take extra care to not make Japan capitulate accidentally. I think we should stop now. I could move this gradually, but if I make a mistake, we'll make them capitulate too quickly, and we will get less in the peace conference. So let's pretend to the Allies that we're having a hard time conquering Japan so that we can get more in the end. 33% already. Turn this ambition complete. Lose some stability. Good thing we can do republicanism again and again and again. There's just claims, no cores or anything, so these are um, virtually useless. What else do we have here? War goal on the Soviets, non-aggression with the Soviets. Oh, so we could combine the paths up until here. Interesting, but we're not gonna do that. Oh, nice. That's research speed 5%, that's a lot. I suppose we could have done that as well. I can play all sides, kinda. But research speed is not important to us anymore. We have researched pretty much everything we could want. Maybe I'll just finish the army reforms. Damn it, did I click this? No. Okay, good. We don't want that. I actually don't want to create a collaboration government in the Soviet Union, but I want to use collaboration government missions to get more compliance, if I can. You know, the Japanese are trying to retake their territory, but we are garrisoned, so it's fine. I don't even have enough to do a capture operative. My spies are bad, aren't they? Iran! Yeah, we have this advisor. Oh, wait a minute. Doing the tourist ambition gave me another advisor I should use. Where is he? Avid tourist. non core manpower will support fascist support. The non core manpower is gonna be nice. Then again, I don't need it at the moment. Best thing about this guy is compliance gain. I'll just leave it for now. I should probably end this war, though. We've slowed down quite a bit, and I still have two or three factions to kill. Can't spend too much time on this. No provisional governments. Time to crush Tokyo. Let's make sure we get points for capturing their capital as well. And that's the end of the war. They should be capitulating to me. Now, do we want Japan as a puppet? Mm, we should take them, yes. They have a nice fleet and they can be useful. So, take all states. Untake something small here. Puppet. Untake the rest. We get a Japanese puppet. Next up. Who has it cheaper to take all this territory? 27, 50, 30, 19. Let's go to our puppet. It's actually cheaper for me to take it directly. Okay, that's fine. So I shall. Start with Manchuko. Do we want Korea? Not really, but our borders will look better with it. Right, that's all the Chinese cores. And Taiwan too. Hmm, I can take half of Siam. That's the end of this first round. What did the Allies take? Micronesia and Mariana Federation. Well, that's not a lot, is it? In that case, I shall take the rest of Siam and see if I'm gonna take Japanese stuff myself or give it to my new Japanese puppet. It's actually slightly cheaper for my new Japanese puppet, so I shall take it for them. I have so much political power that I can just annex them immediately if I want to. Almost immediately. And that's all the territory. End turn. We got almost everything. <laughs> they only liberated two tiny countries for all that fighting they, they did. Which is why I didn't, you know, kill Japan immediately. I wanted to accumulate war score. Let's end the turn. Let's have a look at our Chinese Empire puppet. 8 million manpower. That's less than I expected you to have. But don't worry, I got some new juicy snacks for you. Yes, I could use non-core manpower myself with the advisors that I have, uh, but I prefer to just give this to China, all this Chinese territory. Return territory, there you go. I can just annex them a bit later. For now, let's let them develop. So, 
isn't that beautiful. How's your manpower now? 13 million. Still less than I think you should have. Something is wrong here. No, it's fine. 13 million is not little. Japan. Let's have a look. Our Japanese puppet. Ruled by Hirohito again. We just made him swear fealty. 2 million. Cool. We can use that. And a nice amount of factories they're giving to us. Uh, they are a Reichskommissariat. Yes. So just like China, they're giving us a lot of industry, which is wonderful. They also have an aggressive AI, so this should be helpful as a puppet. Going great. Let's have a look at our country. Oh, right. We don't have a, a faction to display. But I think we're the longest country in existence. Mm, no, maybe the Soviet Union is longer. If you count from here, through here, 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 here. Well, counting our puppet. It's undivided. But no, the Soviets are still longer. And we can't stand that. Two options here. Fight the Soviets now, fight the Germans later. Fight the Germans now, fight the Soviets later. I think we should fight the Soviets now. The Germans are losing, but they're still keeping the Soviets occupied. Let's get our guys in position. See, Hirohito, you should have submitted to me from the start. Now I'm going to protect you. Crush the Soviets time. The strongest troops will attack here, because I would like to cut the Germans off. We lost a unit in all that fighting. Activate the others as soon as possible. Get in position. It'll take them a little while. Should I just have on Mongolia or on the Soviets themselves? I think I'll need to do both, because Mongolia might just not join. The Germans are not doing too well, so I should have a nice chunk of participation in this. Maybe even get everything I need, but I do need Crimea from mm, the Soviets to form Turan. And the Germans tend to take it in the peace deal. So it depends, I might need to fight the Germans right after this. Yeah, the Germans are really doing badly, aren't they? But they are keeping the Soviets occupied, so it's better to fight the Soviets now. But if the Germans die before I can get involved... Then I'll just have to kill the allies. I actually built up infrastructure in the area, which makes it actually decent terrain to travel. Let's maybe bring it up to level 6. Oh, wait a minute, Istanbul is not my capital, Ankara is. Yeah, let's do level 6 all around here. I don't really have anything left to research, anything that I would care about. Let's just do these very much ahead of time buffs to our infantry and support companies. Right, looks like we're good to go. So it will not be expecting it, although troops must be elsewhere. They don't have a war goal on them. But making it will only take 10 days. Ready for a surprise attack, Soviet Union? Well, no, then it wouldn't be a surprise attack, would it? Conquer Crimea. Maybe not Crimea. Or Moscow itself. Yeah, that's better. Do that. The days. They won't be able to relocate their troops. I'll start attacking them immediately. I don't really have an air force, because I can't be bothered to manage it. Uh, but it's not a problem, since we have anti-air in our units. And that's a lot of units. Not all of the units, yes, I admit. But we're producing a lot, and by the time we're done with the Soviet Union, I should be able to outfit all of these guys with support. There are some Soviets arriving here, but it's not nearly enough. Declare war immediately. I don't even need to join the Axis, I'll do it on my own. So Mongolia, they might not join the war, just in case I'm going to do a separate war goal on them. Yay, victory or death against communism. Well, death for the communists, not for us. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, let's call our puppets in, including Japan. They actually should have their navy. Yeah, they have a huge navy, which they can use to my advantage. This is a huge area with very low infrastructure, so it's going to take forever to move through here. But I'm hoping to uh, push strongly through this area. Mongolia. Goodbye. It is a separate war, so I need to call my guys again. Right, now we just wait for the Soviet Union to die. Let's have a look at the Turan decision. Where is that? Sadly, it does not highlight the stuff I need. I need a lot of stuff from the Soviets, and I still need Tatar here. So I need to fight France or Vichy France anyway. So it doesn't matter what the Germans take, I'll have to fight them regardless. I'll probably pop up the Soviets just so I can take more territory in the peace deal. Now, sit back and relax, it's gonna take a little while. We're secure against naval invasions, all the front lines are covered, the Allies are friendly towards us, and so are the Axis, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. I can get military access from the Germans now, so make our borders here work better. Let's just make sure to not attack from German territory, because we don't want to give them occupation. We want it for ourselves. Chinese Empire has increased its independence? Oh really? I thought building all that infrastructure in their territory would fix that. But they are contributing quite a lot to the war effort, so I guess that makes sense. Let's build even more infrastructure for them, so that they have more steel to trade with me. So that for the Japanese too. And then, I guess, some military factories? I will annex them at some point, just not yet. What is my participation? Only 22%. Well, it's still far from the end of this war, so it can be a bit of an issue. But there are ways to rob Germany of all the participation we can rob them of. The unfortunate thing is I need all this as well. It's almost surely going to be taken by the Germans. Oh, I should cut some military access from Free France, because then taking this back will probably transfer it to me. And if I have military access, I think that will transfer it to France. Just a bit longer, and we will be the longest country in the world. 38% victory points, at 20 they capitulate. The Germans took Leningrad and they're about to take Moscow, which means the Soviet Union is about to surrender. 
It would be convenient if I could take these provinces in the peace deal. It's not likely, but it would be convenient. Well, Moscow. Actually, the later this rented, the better for us, because the more territory we will have acquired, and thus the more war participation. We are already at 35% though, which is quite a lot. Gorky is their current capital, but Mongolia, still alive. Somehow, Mongolia capitulates. The Axis want me in their faction, but I don't think I'm going to allow that. So it capitulates. All right. Right, all the territory that I actually require directly is still available. It's also very expensive because I don't control it. We're not in the same faction. What I can do is puppet the Soviets. No, puppeting them with Crimea is expensive. That's a bad idea. In that case, let's puppet them with something cheap. Sure, this works. Then untake all the other states, which is a lot of clicking, unfortunately, because they have a lot of states. Okay, good. The Germans have not taken the territory that I required for Turan. I still need to do France, so it'll be more convenient. See, now I flip to the Soviet Union, and it's all much cheaper. Now I require this, and this, and this, and this, and this, I think. I'm looking at the map on the wiki right now, and this is the border that I require. But what I should actually do is just try and stop the Germans from acquiring anything at all. So to do this, I'm going to need to block them off. I don't know if I have enough war score. Let's try. Okay, this cuts them off from going further in. I also need to get all the coasts and up north as well. And that's too much, apparently. Hmm, damn it. Better idea. I'll just let them have Leningrad. Yep, that'll work. Can even move this way a bit. Let's see if we haven't missed anything. Zero coast provinces, wonderful. Okay, that does it, let's end the turn. The Germans have taken some stuff down here, but they are largely blocked from taking anything else. There is a chance they would liberate some countries, so we should prioritize taking the territories down south, which can be liberated. I'm gonna be annexing them anyway. Let's just give them all the territory we can. Wonderful. This is mine, this is mine, and this is mine. The Axis want me in their faction, but the Axis are almost dead. We have to rush quickly to actually be able to carve a bit out for ourselves. The most important part being Vichy France down here. Go quickly, please. Actually, I do have military access through the Germans, so that'll let me get here quicker, I think. Romania. And I don't actually have to call Russia in. But if I do, that'll probably give me a bit more participation. You know what we should do? We should probably join the Allies and then use all those war goals we can get here to attack various people like, say, Finland, without having them interfere. On the other hand, I think Finland is the only one that would be left, so it's not that important. Tibet went fascist? And the subject of my subject? Okay, I guess. Can you please annex them so that I can annex you with them in it? That would be cool. The Netherlands is doing very well here. Activate all the orders. Now, with my military access through Germany, I suppose I could just attack Italy. Let's cancel military access through Germany. We don't need order 66 on anything like that. Hey guys, I need you to get in position very, very quickly. Because we're running out of time to carve a piece out for ourselves. If they capitulate now, I'll be in a bit of trouble. At least my infrastructure here is pretty decent, so these guys should get there in a relatively quick fashion. It's almost there. Although Germany is almost there as well. There meaning dead. It's time to justify. 10 days. Do I need Cyprus for this? All right, just getting ready, attack immediately. Do I need to call my subject? No, not yet, because my troops are not yet in position. Vichy France, will you join? Not sure. Let's immediately justify war goal to retake our core states. Romania, are you joining? Not sure. Let's justify war goal in Romania as well. Did Italy join? Yes, Italy did join. Go into Italy then. Slovakia has joined, that's okay. Actually, this is not their core territory, so I can activate this order here. I just don't want to make them capitulate too quickly, because they're pretty close to that. Once again, I want to acquire a war score elsewhere first. The Allies want me to join them. It might actually be profitable to do so. I can't decide. Two more justifications ready. Declare war. And also declare war. On Vichy France. Actually, if I annexed my subjects right now, I should be able to form Turan. Should probably do that. Why is this going back to United Kingdom? Oh, because I have access. It's fine, I don't really need it, do I? No, not this bit. Oh, all right, we can lower the independence. Let's do that. And I guess I'll build infrastructure all over China, just to lower their independence. Because we need to do some annexing. Germany, hold on. We do not surrender yet. We did take care of Romania, which is nice. Or was the war score, by the way? 4%, that's nothing. It's time to summon the Soviets. Well, the Russians. Then I should get uh, occupation here. Come on, Germany, hold on. So I can be the one to kill you. Let's send some convoys to China. How many do we have? 1.2 thousand. There you go. I wonder if we'll keep these territories, since they are my cores. 14%. Oh, I didn't call China to the war. Is that why they get so much participation? Let's call them. No, it doesn't seem like it makes a difference. Is that the land lease happening? Okay, so we don't have a lot of war score, but I think we'll have enough to get something in the peace deal. Oh, it went down due to the land lease. Oh, wonderful. She France capitulates, and I retain control of the territory I got. Operation of Paris. Italy has now moved to Africa, but not for long. And of course, right before my victory, right before completing the final goal of the campaign and creating Turan, I had to foolishly and accidentally 
turn my microphone off. So I have the footage, just not the voice. So enjoy some post commentary here. The war was going smoothly, as expected, and we quickly managed to annex China, also stealing all their manpower in the process. Of course, annexing China also gave us back all the equipment we sent to the Mesel and Blease. Thus, the subsequent annexation of Russia was much faster. And finally, having annexed Russia and China, having all that territory directly controlled, and taking Hatai and the bit next to it, can't recall the name at the moment, from Vichy France, we had all the territories needed to form Turan. So in a moment of triumph for our wonderful country, Turan was created. After that, destroying the Germans completely was just a formality. So I pushed with everything and killed them. Now at the peace conference we had a reasonable amount of points. Not the most, but if you pop it quickly and grab land quickly, you can usually get quite a lot when you're against the Allies. So at the peace conference I managed to get Italy puppeted and also acquire a large chunk of Germany. And right at the end of the peace conference I realized that my microphone was off. So we're back. And here we are at the end of the peace conference. We took 71 states. We are the largest in the world. Some border go around Europe. Also don't forget that Italy and Japan are my puppets. And I can crush the allies if I want to, because I have military access to all of them, except for France. So all we need to do is just station some troops in North America and Britain, and then we can just crush the rest normally. But I'm going to end this here, because we have made it. We have created Turan, and we own the most territory of anyone in the world. And we could take all of it, but we don't need to. We're the most powerful anyway. I should let's unpause for a moment and see how the factories change. Yeah, 575 factories only. That is not a lot, but we have very low compliance in many of these places with our advisor who increases compliance quickly and that will soon increase and we would get lots more factories probably around a thousand also uh, we can annex italy and japan to get even more territory quite easily and of course we can kill the allies if we so choose but we're not gonna do that now let's end the video here i hope you enjoyed it you have been asking for turan for quite a long time i hope you are satisfied and that is it for today thank you for watching and i will see you again soon goodbye